Okay, so we said that in the public key uh, cryptography, we said that we need hard problems to design algorithms because we are we need to use those hard problems as our trapdoor. So let's give an, a basic example. And first, let's define the knapsack problem, then design an encryption algorithm, which will be called you know knapsack encryption or crypto system. So let's define the knapsack problem. So you have an input a1 to an. So here, these are just integers. And we define the set of integers with capital A. Question is, that, does there exist epsilon one to epsilon n, where each of these are either zero or one, such that S equals to the summation of the multiplication of epsilon i's and ai's. So actually, here you have some numbers and you have a number here. Question is, can I choose a few of them and add them so that the result becomes S? Okay, this is the definition. So we call it the knapsack problem because assume that you have a knapsack which has some kind of volume, which is the, in our scenario will be S, and you have some uh, items which has volumes AIs. Question is, can you pick up some of the items so that it completely fills the knapsack? Okay, that is the question. Search version is, here we are asking if it can be done or not. In the search problem, you are going to find all of these epsilon i so that you, know, you will give us the solution where s equals to this summation, okay? So the fact is that knapsack decision problem is MP complete. So this means that this is a very hard problem, right? So even the decision problem is hard. So if you can, you know, design a crypto system on this problem, then it should be unbreakable, right? But unfortunately, we have a crypto system and it is broken. So I will explain why this is the case. This doesn't mean that we can solve MP complete problems, okay? We can break the system because it doesn't completely rely on this problem. So, uh, the NEPSEC public key crypto system was proposed by Merkel and Hellman in 1978, and it was cryptanalyzed by Shamir in 1982. So uh, the key generation in this crypto system works like this. Choose a super increasing sequence A1 to AN. I'm not saying increasing, because if I said increasing, then this would mean that you know AI should be you know larger than the one previous than AI and so on. I'm saying super increasing, and I define it like this. Whenever you had a number here, this number is larger than the summation of all of the previous numbers. So it's super increasing, not only increasing. Now you choose a modulus M, which should be larger than the summation of all these numbers. You choose a multiplier W, it should be between one and M minus one. And the greatest common divisor of W and M should be one. So they should be relatively prime in other words. Then you compute WAIs modulo M. So you are kind of masking AIs somewhat and turning them into BIs, okay? Public key becomes all of these BIs. Private key is AIs, also the numbers you have chosen before and M and W, okay? So let's uh, talk about encryption and give an example. So assume that you have an M and you represented it with bits like this, M1 to M1. So this is an M bit message. Ciphertext is defined as follows. You just multiply the bits with BIs and you sum them from one to n, okay? So the result is C. Decryption is as follows. The person who created the system here, we said that key generation. So the person who created the keys, no m, right? So they can calculate inverse of w. We call that in modular arithmetic, inverse of w means when you multiply W with a number, and if it is equivalent to one modulo M, that number means that's the inverse of W. So here we are talking about actual multiplicative inverses somehow, okay? So you write S equals to C uh, multiplied by W inverse, and solve the spur 
increasing knapsack with AIs and S. As you can see, it turned into the knapsack problem because I'm trying to solve S using AIs. But recall that in the original knapsack problem, AIs are not super increasing. This is the difference between our crypto system and the knapsack problem. Because that one is MP complete and this one is not. This is the problem. Why the decryption works? Because C equals to MI times W times AI modulo M. So S equals to this means that you know you just put these values here, and it turns out that it is equal to MI times AI. So it is simply a number theoretic approach. No, it is not that hard, and I'm not going to go much into detail. But it is as simple as that because C means you know this. If you multiply this one with W inverse, you know, W inverse times W becomes one. So you cancel each other and so that's as simple as that. So our basic idea was to hide AIs, turning them into BIs and then recovering them back. Okay. So with this theory, let's give an example and so that it becomes uh, clear. So assume that I chose AIs like this. Okay, so this is our super increasing actually knapsack value. So as you can see, three is larger than the sum of the previous values. Seven is larger than two plus three. 15 is larger than two plus three plus seven. And 31 is larger than 15 plus seven plus three plus two. Okay, because it makes 27. So 31 is larger than this. So I chose our. Uh, private key like this. Then I chose two numbers. M is, uh, should be larger than the sum of these values. So I chose it as 61. And I chose a value W17 so that I'm working on very small numbers. As you can see, of course, in practice, you cannot do it. So you should be working uh, with larger numbers because otherwise, you know, brute forcing would be very easy. So I now say that public key becomes this because recall that uh, the public key was this BIs, which are AI multiplied with W modulo M. So I computed these values. I multiplied with AIs with W modulo M and you know write the results. So this is your public key. So I assume that somebody is going to send you a message M and it is in bit notation is this. So they ask you, what is your public key? So you publicly announce that this is my public key. Just you can do this uh, NAPSEC encryption and send me any message you want. So the person who decrypts do the following. They calculate C, which is equals to 51, 58, and 38. And this is the ciphertext. So you might ask why this is the case. Recall that the encryption was as follows. You take the first bit value, multiply it with this. Take this one, multiply with this, take this one, multiply with this, and so on. This is why the cipher take is now 148. Okay. So you as your message, you send this value. Now I received it, and now I should be able to decrypt it, right? So what I do is the following. I take this value, multiply with 18. They call that I, I was supposed to multiply it with W inverse. So it turns out that the inverse of W is 18 modulus 61. So I calculate S and it turns out to be 41. So this is the first thing. Next, what I do is as follows. I check if 41 is larger than our largest value. It is. So this means that uh, this uh, bit value should be one. Then I subtract 31 from 41. The result is 10. I check if 10 is larger than this, but it is not. So I say that, okay, it should be zero. Then I check if it is larger than seven, yes. Then I say that, okay, third bit value is one. I subtract seven from 10, the result is three. I check if it is larger than equal to three, yes. Then I say it's one, I subtract it zero. So, you know, zero is smaller than two, so it is zero. So as you can see, zero, one, one, zero, one. So the decryption works, okay? So this is a very nice idea. As you can see, the, I'm only sharing my public key with the 
anybody, they can send me a message and I can, they, only I can decrypt it back. So this is the fantastic thing about public key cryptography. The problem is that, of course, I gave a very easy example here with small numbers and so on. But even if you choose large numbers, uh, Shamir, Shamir's attack actually uh, works quite well. So in practice, we don't use this crypto system. Because, and again, you might say that, okay, but the solution actually equivalent to solving the knapsack problem, right? Because here we have 41 and we are checking in the, you know, AIs which fills this. So you might say that, but don't we, if we can break this crypto system, doesn't mean that, doesn't it mean that we can also solve the knapsack problem, which was supposed to be MP complete. And here we are not even solving the decision problem. We are actually solving the search problem, right? As again, in the knapsack problem, this set A is kind of, you know, can be anything. But recall that in the proposed crypto system, we choose a, in a super increasing way. This is the main problem. This is why we can break this crypto system, but cannot solve the knapsack problem in the general sense. Okay. So this was just a basic example of a crypto system uh, which relies on the knapsack problem. Again, uh, since this is broken, there were many modifications in the past to this crypto system, but they were also broken. So people kind of lost their faith in this problem. This is why in practice we don't use this kind of crypto system. You can modify it, you know, come up with better ideas, claim that it is now secure, but you know, all of the past failures kind of uh, discourages us so we are nobody would nobody you know would use it uh, instead of elliptic curve cryptography algamal and so on okay but now then we will talk about more mathematics more algebra so that we can talk about really hard problems like discrete logarithm problem and integer factorization problem